Hello, my name is Henry Emfrey. This is a GDevelop 3D tutorial. Now, actually, GDevelop is a 2D engine, but there's an extension that makes it so that you can create 3D games in GDevelop. And in order for this tutorial to work, you must first have this with 3GS extension installed. Go to this link right here. An extension was made by a developer named Pendaco. All you gotta do is scroll down and click download. And I encourage those who have the means to feel free to donate something to Pendaco. Pendaco did an excellent job of putting that with 3GS extension together so that 3D games could be made easily in GDevelop. Especially at a time when everybody is mostly talking about Godot and Unity and Unreal. This 3D extension is a game changer. I can see this only getting better as time goes on. This 3D extension makes GDevelop even more so of an engine to watch out for. But if not, if you can't contribute, then that's okay too. All you gotta do is just click on this, no thanks, just take me to the downloads. And then it'll take you to this download page, so all you gotta do is just click download. And I save mine to my desktop. And you just click save. And inside of the with3.js zip folder, inside of the with3.js zip folder, I drag this JSON folder into the same folder where I put my sprites and assets for my game, like so. See, it's in the same folder where I put my sprites and assets in, my project folder, the folder we just talked about a moment ago. And then I just clicked on create or search for new extension, clicked on import extension, and that just takes me back to the folder we just talked about where I put all my sprites and assets and stuff at. That takes me to the folder where I can select my with 3 js JSON file that we just talked about. And you click open. Okay, so now that we got our with 3 js extension installed, now we set up our scene. So the first thing I did was to set up my scene, I add new object, and then I double clicked where it was there. I renamed it to ground, and then I click choose a file. I click choose a file down here too. And that's what got me back to the my project three folder, the folder that we've been talking about earlier, the folder that I put my sprites in. So then I scroll down and I just chose this sprite for my floor. And that's how I got this sprite image here. And then I clicked on behavior, add a behavior. And then I clicked on 3D plane projection from tile. Again, I already did all this, but that's what you could do. And I just have these configurations and then click apply. In a similar fashion, I click add a new object. Then I clicked on that, renamed it to camera jet. I named the animation to camera jet too. And then I click add a sprite. That again takes me to my sprite and assets folder. Then I selected my jet. Then put the behavior, add a behavior. And then I put the link 3D camera. And I click on that, and that's how I got this here. And I just had these configurations too. And then click apply. And then after that, I just dragged in my ground and spread it across the window, and then drag in my jet and put it here. Next, I went to my event sheet. So in the event sheet, we have this left column that says if these things happen, for example, if we're at the beginning of the scene, or if the up key is pressed or if the down key is pressed, etc., the things in this right column will happen as a result. So let's start with the first one. Here we got at the beginning of the scene, or if we're at the beginning of the scene, I clicked on the scenes tab at the beginning of scene and clicked OK. So if we're at the beginning of the scene, I went to the with 3JS tab and clicked create 3D scene. I'm going to leave all this other stuff blank just to keep this tutorial short, but you can feel free to experiment to see what things do. So now I'm gonna click OK. So if at the beginning of the scene, then the result will be to create a 3D scene. Likewise, if the up key is pressed, once again, here I went down to the keyboard tab, key pressed, up arrow key. Up refers to the up arrow key. So if the up arrow key is pressed, then camera jet and then I went down to add a force angle and then I attached my object's name camera underscore jet my object's name dot this function called angle in parentheses it will move up in the speed of 50 
again, if the up arrow key is pressed, then our camera jet will move up at a speed of 50. And then all you got to do from there is just copy and then paste the rest and just change this from up to down. Change it to down. No, and then change this to right, change this to right, and change this to left. So now after that, we'll be working with the down key. And here, you, all you got to do is change this to minus 50 instead of 50. See, the same things except this is minus 50. Then if the right key is pressed, we got camera underscore jet. Uh, rotate 50. And then you can just put the same thing here. You put the same thing here. Rotate, but minus 50. Okay, so those are controls for this event sheet. And this setup is to ensure that we have consistent controls when we rotate. We don't want the scenario where the up button could be used to move forward, but when we rotate to move forward again, we don't want the scenario where in order to move forward again, we have to suddenly press the right arrow key or some other button to move forward. No, this setup is to ensure consistent controls so that the up button will always be used to move forward. The back button will always be used to move backwards and it won't be some other button. Okay, so now that's done, let's see what happens. Okay, so when we press the up button, we move forward. I press the down button moves backward. Now here's the real tester. Let's see what happens when we press the right arrow key. Okay, the turn and the up button is still the forward key. The down button is still the backwards key, and that's what we want. Let's see what happens if we use the left key. Okay, up button is still the forward, and down button is still gets us going backwards. Okay, so that's what we want. Now, if you just want first person, then you can stop right here, and this could be the end of the tutorial for you. But I'm going to spice this tutorial up even more, and I'm going to add third person. Okay, so to add third person, add object. This time, it's just going to be a regular sprite. Not 3D sprite, but regular sprite. I'm going to call this jet car. I'm going to call that animation jet car, too. That's sprite. And then I'm going to use this, what I call jet car. Click apply. So now, all I'm going to do is just take this jet car and drag it onto the screen and then I'm just going to resize it a little bit so that it can be in front of the screen when we start a game. Okay, so now let's see what happens. See? Now we got third person. This don't have to be a car. It could be a gun or, or a real jet or whatever. But as you see, up button is still forward, down button is still backwards. If we go to the right, the up button is still the up button. And if we go to the left, the up the down button is still the down button. Again, the up button is still the up button. So you can be creative with that, and you can always add animations to your, your regular sprite. Do the same thing you would do with a regular 2D sprite. Because again, all this is is just a 2D sprite. Okay, so you can take what you learned in this tutorial and expand on it. I really like this GDevelop 3D because it opens up doors for more possibilities in GDevelop. And I really think this is going to really develop further. So hey, GDevelop is really one of my favorite games. GDevel makes it really easy to make games. So feel free to take what you learned in this tutorial and expand on it. Till next time. Thanks. Bye. <clears throat>